The workshop activity module is a peer assessment activity. With the workshop, students are able to submit an assignment for grading. Uh, students are able to assess the work of their peers. Uh, teachers are able to grade the work of the submitted assignment as well as the assessment submitted by the students. Once the assessment period is over, the assessments are averaged and graded according to the teacher's configurations in the workshop settings. The workshop activity has five phases. In the setup phase, the teacher sets the workshop description, provides instructions for submission, and edits the assessment form. In the submission phase, the workshop is open for students to submit their work. In this phase, the teacher provides instructions for assessments and sets up scheduled allocations of the assessments. In the assessment phase, the workshop is open for students to assess the work of their peers. In the grading evaluation phase, the grades are calculated. And in the closed phase, the workshop is ended and the students are able to view their grades. To add a workshop to your course, log into Moodle and click Turn Editing On. Click Add an Activity and select Workshop. Add a name for your workshop. The description is optional. If you want the description displayed on your course page, click here. In the grading settings, there are four methods of grading. Accumulative grading, comments, number of errors, and a rubric. You can click the little question mark to the left here to see an explanation of the grading. The students receive a grade for submission and a grade for the assessment. I've configured the gradebook in this course. The grade for submission will go to Compositions, and the grade for assessment will go to Class Participation. The default grade for submission is 80%. The default grade for assessment is 20%. After grading, we have the submission settings. Enter the instructions for submission. In this case, we want the students to write one paragraph describing an attraction, person, place, or thing from last week's field trip. If attachments are allowed, you can indicate the number of attachments here, in this case one. The size for the attachment can be indicated here, and we'll set it at 10 megabytes. Late submissions, you can allow late submissions here, in this case we won't. After the submission settings, we have the assessment settings. These are the instructions explaining how the student should assess the work of their peers. In this case, we'll have the students assess the written description submitted by fellow students. And we have a list of criterion, preparation, content, and delivery. If you want students to assess their own work, click here. In this case, we won't. Next, we have the feedback settings. Let's close this. If feedback is enabled, a text field is displayed at the bottom of the assessment form. Reviewers can put the overall assessment of the submission there or provide additional explanations for their assessment. We'll leave the maximum number of overall feedback attachments at 1, 10 megabytes. The conclusion will appear at the end of the workshop. The student will see the statement, congratulations for reaching the end of this workshop. Next, we have the settings for example submission. If enabled, users can try assessing one or more example submissions and compare their assessment with a reference assessment. Grades are not counted for example submissions. There are three modes of example assessments. The first is voluntary submission. The student can choose not to do the example submission. In the second mode, the student must complete the example submission before he can complete his own submission. In the third mode, the example submission becomes available only after the student has submitted his own submission. The availability setting for the workshop has one additional setting. 
the switch to the next phase after the submission's deadline setting. This setting will force the workshop to automatically switch to the assessment phase after the submission's deadline. The common module settings, restrict access settings, and activity completion settings are the same as in all other modules. Click Save and Display. Still in the setup phase, we now have to set up our assessment form for the students. Aspect 1 from our assessment instructions. Preparation. Was the paragraph thoughtful and comprehensible? Best possible grade set at 10 and we'll use a weight of 1. Aspect 2. Content. Was the paragraph without errors in spelling and punctuation? Aspect 3 was delivery. Did the paragraph engage you? Was it an enjoyable read? Hit save and preview. And this is what the student will see in the assessment phase when they're asked to assess the work of their peers. Back to the written language workshop. And now we can prepare example submissions. Click Add Example Submission. Enter a title for the submission. Enter the submission content. If the student has an attachment, it can be added here. Click Save Changes. To assess the example, click here. And this is what the student will see. You'll see that it's a reference assessment, the aspects, the section for feedback, any attachments, and they will save it at the bottom. At this point, the setup phase is complete. Once the setup phase is complete, we enter the submission phase. Click here and then click continue. The instructions for the assessment have been provided as indicated by the screen check mark. During the submission phase, the teacher can also set up the allocation for the assessments. With manual allocation, the teacher will choose the reviewer for each assessment. With random allocation, the reviewers are randomly selected. Scheduled allocation will automatically allocate submissions at the end of the submission phase. Please note that the scheduled allocation is not executed if you manually switch the workshop into the assessment phase before the submissions deadline. You would have to allocate submissions yourself in that case. The scheduled allocation method is particularly useful when used together with the automatic phase switching feature. The automatic phase switching feature is located under Edit Settings under the Availability option. For this workshop, we'll choose the Random Allocation. One review per submission. Save changes. In this example workshop, two students have submitted assignments. I'm going to switch it to the assessment phase. Click continue. In this phase, the students would assess the work of their peers. Uh, let's log in as a test student. I'm logged in as test user. It's in the assessment phase, and he has one assessment pending. Click here to assess. Choose grade. No comment. Choose a grade for content and the grade for delivery. And no attachments. Let's save that. 
and then go back to the teacher view I was logged in as test user and this is the grade he gave to test student and at the top test student can see the grade that was given by test user Let's switch to grading phase in the grading evaluation settings click recalculate grades to calculate your grades this setting specifies how strict the comparison of assessments should be the stricter the comparison the more similar the assessments need to be in order for a high grade to be obtained although Moodle calculates these grades they can always be changed in the Moodle gradebook Let's close the workshop, hit continue, and these grades should now be in your Moodle gradebook. Let's go back to the course, grades, and there they are. If you need to change a grade, you can always click turn editing on and override the grade that was provided by the system. The last thing I'll cover for the workshop is permissions. Let's go back to our course, back to the workshop. In the administration block for the workshop, click permissions. In this window, permissions can be removed by role. I'll select student, And if I didn't want students to view all submissions, I could click Prevent. This would prevent students from viewing all submissions for this workshop only. Also in the administration block, we have Check Permissions. In this window, you can view permissions by user. Click Test Student. Search this user's permissions. And you'll receive a list of permissions for that particular user. And that concludes the workshop activity webinar. Thanks for watching.